recently I visited um, the communities where we are affected by the recent floods. Um, so we had a, uh, a big meeting to discuss about the issue of the projects and what happened um, on, on, on the day of the flooding. So they were able to, to update me. In fact, um, they were saying the floods came around midnight. So everyone was uh, fast asleep. And the, I mean, when they, they just start seeing some water inside their houses, um, uh, start things are moving out, out. And so it was so, so difficult for them. So um, the parents or elder, they started looking for their children to try to rescue them. Um, to get out the house and it was, you know, there was no electricity that area, so it was dark. Uh, it was difficult to see things where the children are, but fortunately, most of them, they were able to get their children, get out their houses. And some, they were saying, as soon as they got out their houses, they, the house fall, fall down because, you know, most of their houses have been constructed by mud, not proper cement. So when they got water, it easily um, fall apart. All their food, uh, which they had at their home, all the savings or whatever of their food, they washed away, nothing at food. And in their garden, because that was the uh, the planting season. So, in fact, in, in March when I was there, it was about it for them to start harvesting. Usually they start harvesting at the end of April, May time. So the, the maize and sorghum and these other crops were about uh, to be harvested. But in actual fact, that it's washed away everything so they they are left with nothing no food now from home no food uh, from their garden so they have nothing so far we have, we have this uh, three month uh, we get uh, an emergency program or relief program to those 12 communities where we are working and the first thing so we were trying to help the community uh, to come back to normal, eh, to bring back their their life uh, style back to normal. So first is um, we are we are putting temporary structure for the ECD, uh, the, these preschools, eh? just temporary structure so to to help the children to come back to school. And when they come back to school, so the teachers who have been trained by the project to continue teaching them and uh, to continue uh, providing counselling to them. Uh, so that the children, they can come back to normal. That's very, very important. Of course, some of the temporary structure, when I was there, they were already put in place. And the children, they've started coming. At the same time, we wanted to help the parents now to concentrate on other recovering process in their home. So if that the time, they will, because the children, they'll be away, um, they, they, that's the time they'll continue uh, doing the reconstruction, going to the garden, doing this and that. And when the children come to the preschool in the temple, we, we supported them with uh, the provision of porridge, uh, nutrition porridge at the, the preschool. So we, we also fund that so that when the children come, because there's a difficulty of food at home, at least when they get to the school, they will be assured to get that porridge. The volunteers who are teaching the children in the kids club, we also we have supported them with the uh, maize, uh, maize flour, so that um, uh, at least they should also concentrate with the children um, in the kids club. They should not think about, oh, I cannot come because I need to go and look for food for, for my children at home. We also provide now for the entire community. They call it a first aid psychosocial support to, to help now the community to, to overcome their psychological problem and the shock, everything. So this is a some sort of counseling they are provided to the So the project team, they do it on a weekly basis. They organize a meeting. They wanted to hear the shock or the um, difficulties which the community are going through, and they'll be able to respond through counseling, provide additional support. You know, some of them, they, they need some medical attention. So during those meetings, um, the project team will refer them either to the hospital, or to the uh, medical practitioners who are available are around. And also um, the information which they gathered from those meetings, they also shared with the government. The government got a department which is dealing with the, they call it disaster management department from the government. So they are also depending from our projects team to provide some of those information which they 
acquired from through those meetings. Yeah. Now the community are very appreciative for what we have done so far. Although there are more which they, they wanted us to do, but I think we had a good start. At least we are able to bring back all the beneficiaries and be there with them during these difficulties. You know, we have a project officer is based in those communities. And he, he was also affected with the floods. His, his house, which he was staying, it was pulled apart during floods. So he had to, to move, uh, to go to some other area. So the community, the chief were telling me, you know, you are so different. You know, for you, you have a person who has experienced the difficulties we are going through. And he has never moved out from the community to say, oh, no, I cannot stay in this community because of this. He's still here with us. When he wake up in the morning, he come to the preschool, he comes to go to the children's um, kids club, to visiting the volunteers, visiting the chiefs. We discuss together. So that is a really like a good partnership between the project and the, and the community. They are very, very appreciating for that. 